Hello, in this video we will be discussing FERC Order 881 which pertains to seasonal line ratings, ambient adjusted ratings, and dynamic line ratings. FERC Order 881 essentially acknowledges that line ratings can change depending on external conditions influencing the line and that line ratings are not a simple constant value under all circumstances. As ambient conditions such as air temperature, wind speed and direction, solar intensity, etc. change, it can impact the temperature of conductors, which will influence the amount of electrical current that a conductor can safely transmit before a clearance violation occurs. Adjusting the ratings of your lines to take into account these outside influences is a concept referred to as Ambient Adjusted Ratings, or AAR for short. Ambient adjusted ratings as specified in FERC Order 881 require that for short-term transmission service requests, ratings be calculated based on forecasted ambient conditions for a period of 10 days at a maximum of 1 hour intervals, and these ratings must be updated every hour. However, for longer term service requests, or service requests anticipated to occur more than 10 days in the future, seasonal line ratings may be used. Seasonal line ratings are very similar to ambient adjusted ratings, except rather than relying on forecasted ambient conditions, line ratings instead are adjusted for worst case weather representations for no fewer than four seasons. Seasons can be defined by the transmission provider, but they cannot be any longer than a six month period. Also, while not technically required by FERC Order 881, you may also see references to additional ratings for nighttime events to account for absence of solar heating. Dynamic Line Ratings, on the other hand, or DLR for short, takes the concept of ambient adjusted ratings a step further and says that ambient conditions are continuously changing and therefore your line ratings can be continuously adjusted based on actual field measured ambient conditions in real time. FERC Order 881 does not require the use of dynamic line ratings, but it mentions that systems should be in place to accept continuously varying ambient conditions in the future and be able to adjust line ratings in real time. So how do we calculate these ambient adjusted or seasonal ratings for FERC Order 881 and PLS CAD? Currently, IEEE Standard 738 is used by many in the US, which is a series of heat balance equations that relate conductor temperature to electrical current. Other options that can be used in PLS CAD software are C-Grade 207 and 601 and TNSP 2009. Powerline engineers and designers are concerned with conductor temperatures during a line's design phase because it is the thermal elongation of wires that most frequently limits the clearance of wires to ground or other obstacles. However, when it comes to the operation of a line, the people that are responsible for monitoring and operating lines and switchgear only care about how much electrical current or power they can push through a line. So for line designers and engineers, they must take a final step in PLS CAD after determining maximum operating conductor temperatures and convert those temperatures into electrical line currents. With this information, we can now show how easily PLS CAD can currently meet the requirements of FERC Order 881. In this video, we will demonstrate an example of how one could create a set of four seasonal ratings with both a daytime and a nighttime variant for a total of eight different ratings. Based off of this demonstration, you'll be able to see how one could extrapolate these processes further to perform short-term ambient adjusted ratings as well based on forecasted data. The first step in attaining these ratings is to find the maximum conductor temperature a line can be operated at before a limiting clearance issue is found. This can be done via the Lines Reports Thermal Rating Report feature in PLS CAD that continuously increases the wire temperature until a violation is found in every span of the line. Traditionally, the lowest temperature found would be the thermal rating for the line. For more information on performing thermal rating reports in PLS CAD, please refer to the technical note posted in the video description below. Once this thermal rating temperature is found from the thermal rating report, you would convert that maximum operating temperature into an electrical current for the eight different seasonal rating conditions in our example. To start this discussion, let's assume we've performed a thermal rating on this line that resulted in a maximum operating temperature of 207 degrees Fahrenheit before a clearance violation occurs. Let's also assume that for all seasons we will subject the conductors to a 2 foot per second wind that is applied at a 90 degree perpendicular angle to the wires. We'll also assume our power line is located in Madison, Wisconsin near the power line system's office. Maximum seasonal temperatures for four seasons, spring, summer, fall, and winter, we will assume to be 72, 95, 63, and 35 degrees Fahrenheit respectively. For calculating solar radiation, let's assume a day in the middle of each of the four seasons, May 6th, August 7th, 
November 6th and February 4th respectively. Now to begin calculating these ratings, we use a feature that has been in PLS CAD since version 11 that was released back in 2011, which is located at Sections, Thermal Calculations, Batch Thermal Calculator. There are other thermal calculation options in PLS CAD that perform single calculations where you can calculate a conductor temperature for a given electrical current or an electrical current for a given conductor temperature. You can also look at transient calculation methods to evaluate the change in conductor temperature over time so you can look at short-term emergency ratings or fault ratings. In future versions of PLS CAD, Powerline Systems plans to make new features and tools to help simplify the process of developing ambient adjusted and seasonal ratings. But if we navigate to Sections, Thermal Calculations, Batch Thermal Calculator, we can see that it brings up a large table so we can make many thermal calculations at once. In the upper left corner, you can change which results will appear depending on current or temperature rating requirements. In our example, we want to convert our conductor temperature into an electrical current rating, so we will select this second option. We could click this button in the lower right to access the default values for adjusting things like the day of the year, air temperature, wind speed and direction, conductor temperature, and other default parameters for the calculations. We're going to have to change several of these settings based on the four seasons and the day and nighttime variants, but we can set the universal settings that are used for all the ratings, like the 2 foot per second wind, the 90 degree wind to conductor angle, sun time of 12 p.m. for maximum solar radiation, and the conductor temperature of 207 degrees, which we got from the thermal rating report. Note we will be able to change these values in the table as well later, but these are just some typical default values. The next step is to click the Import Project Wires button which will populate this table with the different calculations. Calculations can be for a dead-end to dead-end section, or we can set it up so that each span in our line will be imported and we can have a span-by-span -span rating. Typically ratings won't change significantly between spans, but if you wanted to account for the changes in line direction or elevation, it may have a slight impact on the calculated rating. For simplicity, let's just choose the option to run calculations for entire tension sections from dead end to dead end, and we'll use the voltage filter here to just bring in the 138 kV wires. This gives us a total of 5 tension sections. Now because we need a total of 8 different ratings, we'll need to copy these 5 rows 7 more times for a total of 40 rows. And now we just need to make the adjustments to the ambient conditions for the four different seasons and the day and nighttime variants. So rows 1 through 5 will be the spring daytime rating, so we will enter the day of the year to be May 6th. The sun time will be 12 for the most solar radiation. The air temperature will be 72 degrees based on the maximum spring temperature. And all the other settings match our assumed defaults or PLS CAD has automatically filled them in for us. Rows 6 through 10 will be the spring nighttime rating, so everything will be the same, except we will change the sun time to say no sun. And after we do the same process for all the other three seasons, both day and night, we will have our seasonal ratings. After this, we should look for whichever row in each rating condition gives the lowest steady state current and use that for the rating of the line for each of the eight different scenarios. So in the end of this exercise, we have the following ambient adjusted ratings for the day and night time of the four different seasons. Notice how when the ambient temperature is lower or during the nighttime when there is no solar radiation, the amount of electrical current we can push through the lines is higher for the same power line. We hope that you find this video helpful in using PLS CAD to calculate your ambient adjusted and seasonal ratings for meeting the requirements of FERC Order 881. And if you have any questions at all, please contact our technical support team. Thank you for watching. If you'd like more information about our software, please see our website at www.powline.com. If you have any questions, please contact us at info at if you'd like to receive a quote to purchase or renew your license, please contact us at sales at powline.com. And for any technical questions, please contact us at support at powline.com. Thank you for watching and your interest in our software, the industry standard in overhead line design.